Dr. Jeremy Weiss, I'm here with Kevin Waldron. If you don't know Kevin, what he's done in 1989, he was struggling to grow a fledgling disaster restoration business and on a shoestring budget, no college degree, no real business experience. Um, he had the hunger just to do it and to go out there. And what he did was he grew his company to a regional powerhouse with five offices, over 200 employees, 25, $24 million in sales. You fast forward, he sold his company to a national franchise. And uh, after a few years, he is you know, basically helping other people br have breakthroughs. And so I love Kevin's um, thoughts and leadership. And um, one of the things, Kevin, that you talk about is you talked about don't wobble and stay true to what you wanted. Um, what do you mean by wobbling? Good question. Uh, wobbling for me as uh, I work with some really talented entrepreneurs and, and when we get together, they, we create or we invent big games for them to play, right? Because they're, they're typically trying to get to that next level of yeah. success or next level of fulfillment. Um, it can be really easy sitting in my office to come up with a big game and then even to leave the office and go and go into the world and start to make it happen. Um, typically, in let's say like a 12-month project, somewhere around six months, um, the numbers sometimes don't appear like they're on track, right? Mm. Like we're, we're a little bit behind. Um, and that for me is a lot of times when the wobble comes in, right? So the wobble to me looks like... Um, we said we were going to do uh, $5 million in sales this year in additional sales, and we get halfway through, and we're on track for $4 million and not five. So rather than doubling down and going, all right, what do we need to do to, to get five? Because five is what we really wanted. We start to rationalize, right? We start to make excuses. Oh, we four start is to pretty say, good anyway. Exactly. Well, yeah, four is pretty good. Yeah, I'd probably guess, yeah. Four, four is great. Most people don't do four anyways. If I hit four, right. I'd be happy. Right, and everybody listening knows that conversation because we've all done it, including me. Um, and for me, it's just an, it's a I can rationalize to, all day long. <laughs> some people do it for a living, right? Yeah. Um, and the thing about rationalizing is you rationalize it in your own head first. Right? And if you lead a team, one of the problems I see in dealing with even with clients, even smart ones, is they rationalize it down to $4 million, but they don't tell the team that they did that. So they're inauthentically playing the game hmm. inside their own companies. Everybody else in the company thinks it's $5 million, but they've really succumbed and surrendered and they're playing at $4 million. They've settled and The reality is it's a game that you made up. Right, You completely make it up. And a little bit of circumstances pop up and all of a sudden, you know, you, you, you want to wobble. Totally natural, but what I've, in my experience and how I coach clients is don't wobble. Like when you start to wobble, uh, you want to do a couple of things. The first thing is you want to get clear again on what your commitment was, right? Get clear again. So if it was five million and you've got six months to go, there's plenty of time left in the game uh, to make the adjustments, but you got to recommit. And recommit sometimes is as simple as the to yourself. No, that is my game and I'm not coming off the field. Mm. And you may not even know how to do it. You might not even know which strategies you have to do at this moment in yeah. time. But you're clear about the number again. Yeah. It's a mindset at that uh, point. Is it a mindset? I just th I don't know. When you said that, it made me think of like a, a sports player who like injures their ankle in, in whatever, the Super Bowl. And they're like... I'm not coming out. <laughs> like they just made up their mind, yeah. right? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, and and the reality for me is, I, I mean, I'm not an idiot. Sometimes you play games and you don't win every game you play. Yeah. Right. But here's the deal: you don't get to give up six months into the game. Hmm. You play the game for twelve months and then you look up and you either won the game or you didn't. But how did you play the whole way through? Because how you played, if you played the game well the whole way year, the whole way through the year. It almost doesn't matter if you make the five million because if you played the game properly, you'll see how to make the adjustments for the next year. Totally, totally. Um, so you return your commitment, and then you also talk about getting really clear. How do people yeah. do that? So it's so I have this little joke like if you you only want to throw one ball, and what that means is if I'm playing with my dog, and she loves to fetch balls, she can fetch balls all day long. But if I threw three balls out there. 
you know, she gets the Scooby Doo look. Like, <laughs> what do you want me to chase? Right? Just throw one ball. So you got to land. It's either four million mm. or it's five, but it can't be both. Um, and there's something about um, I got this when I went to the extraordinary golf school that whatever the target you have, the target draws out the technique. Right? You don't even necessarily need to know exactly how to get there, but but by just having the five million dollar number there. Um, you'll see what strategies to take if you're clear about what the one number is. Hmm. So return the commitment, get clear again, anything else? Yeah, once you get clear, get moving. Hmm. Right? Like, like there's, there's nothing else to do. You're back on the field. Um, you've re-engaged yourself. Make sure you re-engage your team. Um, and if you're behind in the score, um, you know, do you think a sports team at halftime comes in and tries to pretend that you know they're getting beat three one at halftime? No, you come in and you tell the team, "Hey, we're behind. You know, we're two goals done. Um, but this is what we're going to do in the next quarter or the next half to correct that." Um, people come from behind all the time. I mean, it's you know, yeah. And you are all about action. So, yeah. the action and the challenge for this. What should people do? Um. Pretty much what we just talked about. Mm-hmm. So when you know, first of all, you have to acknowledge that you're wobbling. When we wobble and we rationalize, we do it first and here. Um, when's the last time you ever saw somebody rationalize out loud in public? It usually never happens because we're so embarrassed by it. So when you catch yourself wobbling, um, you have to get clear again. And I use this phrase called, when you wobble, you have to acknowledge reality. So if you said you were going to do it, you're on track for five million and you're only on track for, you wanted to do five and you're only on track for four, you have to acknowledge that and you have to acknowledge to yourself that you're wobbling mm. uh, and then simply recommit, right? Like get clear again, is this the number that I want um, and say it out loud and then re-enroll the team and everybody else that's involved in that number. Yeah, one thing you wrote in an email that I liked is, um, you allow yourself to get excited about it again. How do you yeah. how do you get ex- or help people or you yourself get excited about it again? Because it's it's a little bit I don't know. We have pride and you feel like we're not hitting our we're not on track and it's a little bit demoralizing, I guess. Oh yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, feel, we we can, and we get lost. I mean, um, one of my favorite phrases, I think it was the guy that started Saks Fifth Avenue, his name was David Campbell, and his definition of discipline was discipline as remembering what you want, mm. right? So it wasn't like, you know, grind and, you know, muscle or whatever. It was simply remembering what you wanted, mm. right? Return, so there's that thing about returning to your commitment. And it's easy, again, when people visit me in my office or we're on the telephone, um, nobody's shooting at you, right? You're free to make up all kinds of new possibilities, new created futures, you're free yeah. to imagine, and then you go outside in the world and the world hits you, circumstances hit you. So you forget, circumstances in life sometimes will make you forget who you are and what you're up to, right? Um, and I don't know about you, but it, you know if you've ever had that experience on a rainy Tuesday at, three o'clock and you're like what the hell who am i again what am i up to right. what's important to me so it super helps if you've got any big commitments to make sure you've got them written down you can't manage any commitments in your head yeah um and there's a, another there's another quote that i love that came from the head of service master who's like a billion dollar corporation and this guy talked about don't doubt in the dark what you saw in the light hmm and that, that's what that specific thing about when you wobble, you forget who you are and what you said you were about. Mm. And, the, and it's still possible. You just forgot that it was. Yeah. And one thing you just said I feel resonated with me is when you acknowledge it, it's almost empowering. You know, yeah. so I feel like sometimes myself or other, like we kind of just sweep it under the rug and don't really acknowledge it. And when I feel like when I acknowledge things, that I'm not going to hit something or do something, that is an empowering thing as well. It's, and get, it gets I'm, me excited. You yeah, know, so. I'm so glad you said that because it's hugely important. Um, the thing about acknowledging it, um, if you're scared, say you're scared. Right? <laughs> like it's not a big deal because as soon as it comes out of your mouth, then it doesn't have any power over you anymore. Right. 
right? And it's not power of pump. It's not a matter of pumping yourself up or saying positive affirmations. But to be able to just say, oh, I just realize I'm scared. Oh, all right. Um, and then with, or I'm scared that I'm behind or I'm scared I'm not going to meet my goal. Um, fear usually for me involves a couple of things. It's either you're going to lose something that you've already got that you value or feel that you're not going to get something that you want. Um, and when you acknowledge that, when it's out there, it is empowering because you return, in my opinion anyway, you return to who you really are, which for most people is pretty powerful when we don't have all that BS running through our head. Mm. So, Kevin, where can people find more where, where they can sign up for your uh, emails and get more information? Um, that conversation we just had is part of an email series that I do every Sunday. Um, it's called Ready for Monday. And it goes out every Sunday morning at 6 o'clock. And you can go to waldronleadership.com. That's my home website. And there's a ton of articles on there. And you can uh, there will be a link on there for how to sign up for that newsletter. Okay. Go on to waldronleadership.com. That's W-A-L-D-R-O-N, leadership. Thanks again. Thanks, Jeremy.